So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So let's go through the agenda for today. So we are going to start with a brief introduction of QuestBridge, including the programs that we offer, our college partners, eligibility criteria for our programs, et cetera. And then we'll dive into the College Prep Scholars program. So we'll go over the timeline, what you'll need to apply, and we'll highlight a few awards. Finally, we will discuss how to get started on your application, what you'll need, and I'll direct you to some of the resources that you can use as you work on your application. Now we do have a packed schedule and it's very possible that we will run over the hour. Um, so if you have to leave early and miss some of the webinar, that is okay. We'll send out a recording um, and you can also find it on YouTube the next day. So don't worry if you have to leave or, or anything like that. We'll, we'll post it and share it with you for sure. All right, so let's get started with the QuestBridge introduction. So QuestBridge is a nonprofit organization. It's a national nonprofit organization that was founded in 1994 in California. And our programs are designed to help high achieving students from low income backgrounds in the college admissions process throughout their college career and beyond. So to date, we have over 96,000 students who have been served by our programs and over 20,000 QuestBridge scholars and, and alumni nationally and globally. So to put it into context for College Prep Scholars, we've actually had 28,000 attendees at our QuestBridge National College National College Admiss Admission Conferences. So hopefully after you apply to our um, College, Prep, College Prep Scholars program, you might be one of those attendees in the future. All right. So we're gonna do a quick overview of the progression of programs here at QuestBridge, starting with the College Prep Scholars program for high school juniors. And this is the program that we'll be focusing on today. So this program offers awards and resources to help juniors in the college application process, and specifically in applying to our college partners, which are some of the best in the nation. The College Scholars Program directly leads to the National College Match for high school seniors in the fall, which is QuestBridge's admissions and scholarship process to our college partners. When National College Match finalists enroll at one of our QuestBridge College partner, QuestBridge partners, they become a part of the QuestBridge Scholars Network. And after graduation, they roll over into the QuestBridge Alumni Association. So people that are in the QuestBridge Alumni Association can now also apply to fully funded MBA programs through the graduate school match. And hopefully this will expand to other graduate programs in the future. So as you can see, the College Prep Scholars Program is really just the first step in the QuestBridge journey. And there's a long way to go. And here are our 52 college partners in alphabetical order. So this list includes top liberal arts colleges, it includes research universities, it includes consortiums, it includes women's colleges, it includes all types of schools that are very, um, very selective. And these colleges that partner with us have an active commitment to search for high achieving students from low income backgrounds. And they promise to meet 100% of demonstrated financial need. So we partnered with our first schools, including Amherst College, and Rice University in 2003, and we welcome our newest partners, Cornell University and Skidmore College this year. All right, so I would love if you all can chat us now. So I'm gonna turn the chat back on, and I'd love to know which schools are you curious about? So I know that a lot of the schools on the list are probably schools that you've already heard of, that you know of, that are very, very well known across the country, but it's always fun to explore schools that you may have never heard of. Um, so I'm definitely seeing a lot of those bigger name schools in the chat, but um, hopefully throughout this presentation and throughout your research that you start after this, after this webinar even, you become interested in some of those um, other schools that are just as amazing um, and that are part of our Westbridge College Partner Network. So in the chat, I am seeing Wesleyan, I am seeing um, Johns Hopkins, I'm seeing Tufts. And I'm seeing some schools that aren't a part of our college partners. So I do encourage you to go onto our website and look at the list of our 52 college partners that do work with us. Because um, that'll that'll help inform your perception of, 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 of who QuestBridge works with, right? So definitely go on our website and explore all of our schools there. Because some of the ones that y'all are mentioning in the chat actually aren't our partners. So definitely be sure to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and close the chat. but I. Um, I'm super excited to see everybody engaging. Alrighty, so let's keep going. 
So now we're going to go over what we generally look for in applicants to our program. So there are things that or these are the things that apply to both uh, typical college prep scholars and typical national college match finalists. That being said, we do take a holistic approach to reading our applications, and therefore we really do look at every piece of the puzzle, and we don't have strict requirements or cutoffs. So the first is students who attend school in the U.S., regardless of citizenship status, as well as U.S. citizens or permanent residents who are attending school internationally are eligible to apply to our programs. We also seek students who have demonstrated a level of academic achievement that meets or exceeds the admission standards of our college partners. Usually these are students who earn primarily A's in the most challenging courses available to them. Um, they often are in the top five to 10% of their graduating class, and they will demonstrate strong writing ability and intellectual curiosity. If you have taken standardized tests like the ACT or SAT, Scores typically fall within the 50% range of 26 to 31 for the ACT and 1290 through 1460 for the SAT. Now, please note that test scores are not required to apply and around half of Questbridge applicants in the past year have not had test scores. So these numbers that I just shared with you are general criteria based on successful applicants who reported test scores. And we also accept PSAT, pre-ACT and AP tests um, for the College Prep Scholars application. Now, keep in mind that we are looking for students who are both high achieving and from low income backgrounds. So students typically come from household, households earning less than 65,000 annually for a household of four with minimal assets. Assets include any significant savings or invest, investments, homes or other properties that your family might own. This includes businesses. Notice that our guidelines suggest 65000 annually for a typical household of four. However, if you have a household of, let's say, eight or larger or smaller, then your financial circumstances will be evaluated within that context. Um, so we wouldn't look at you the same way as we would as a family of four, for example. So I just like to re reiterate that there is no strict cutoff um, and any student who feels that they have faced financial obstacles are free to apply. And then we also take into consideration any special circumstances that students and their families might be facing. There is lots of room in the application for students to mention things like large unreimbursed medical bills or other factors that are affecting their family's financial situation. We also look at strength and character, um, resilience, and involvement in extracurricular or community activities. We also want to remind you that responsibilities like working part-time jobs to help the family or pay bills, uh, or caring for siblings after school if your parents are absent or at work. These are also activities and you can write about them in your application. And some of our students also happen to be first generation college students, but this is not a requirement. All right, so before we move on, we're gonna do a quick review of some of our eligibility criteria. So there are three questions that I'm gonna ask. Uh, the first question is in general, what types of students are we looking for? And I'm going to release the poll in just a moment. The second question is true or false. Undocumented students attending high school in the United States are eligible to apply. And then the third question is true or false again. Students must be first generation college students to apply. So I'm going to go ahead and launch this poll. And I want to see what you all, if you have been listening to the little spiel I just gave about eligibility. So yeah, look at all of these questions and then answer them. And once I see that most people have answered the questions, I'll go ahead and end the poll and then we'll go over the answers. All right, I'm seeing that most people are getting the answers correct, but I'm seeing some, some confusion. So, and that's perfectly okay, right? There is a lot that we're going over here. So it's best that we answer those questions right now. We get it cleared up so that you know all the information, you need. You have everything you need to know so that you can apply um, if you're eligible. All right, so we are almost at everybody has participated in this survey. So I'll close it in just another second or two. All right, so it looks like most people have answered the poll. So I'm gonna go ahead and end it. And we're gonna go over the answers. All right, so. The correct answer for um, for the first question in general, what types of students are we looking for is high achieving 
and from a low income background. So that's a really key part about our eligibility criteria. Students have to be both high achieving. So again, that means taking classes that um, that are challenging, right? As challenging as they are available to you. So if your school offers AP or IB courses or if they offer honors courses and that's all they offer, um, we're gonna be looking at it within that context, right? What does your school offer? And are you taking um, the most challenging courses that are offered at your high school? And then are you excelling in them, right? So you do wanna be doing well in those classes. Um, and then that other important component, you have to be from a low income background. And of course that's gonna look different for different people. So that's why we get that general guideline of about, about 65,000 a year for a family of four, but that number would change a bit if you have a, a, a larger family or a smaller family. For the second question, true or false, undocumented students attending high school in the United States are eligible to apply. True. So if we think back to what was mentioned on that slide, any student that is currently attending high school in the United States is eligible to apply. And if you're a U.S. citizen or permanent resident who is attending high school outside of the U.S., like let's say in a foreign country, you are still eligible to apply. So those are the two um, kind of buckets that students usually fall into. And then the last question, true or false, students must be first-generation college students to apply. This is false. So every year, a lot or a certain percentage of our students um, who do become scholars are first-generation college students, but this is by no means a requirement. So <coughs> all these things are important to keep in mind as you determine your eligibility for our programs. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and close out this poll. All right, and we'll keep going. Thanks for your participation in the poll. I really appreciate it. All righty. So again, I want to reiterate that we do not have absolute criteria or cutoffs for GPA, test scores, or income. And we need to take a holistic approach um, in reviewing applications. And holistic means that we are looking at every piece of your application, right? So we're not just going to look at income and immediately say no. We're not just going to look at, uh, at your grades or immediately say no, right? So we're going to look at every piece of your application to make a determination. And all all the while still focusing on students who are coming from long-term low-income backgrounds and who are or are on their way to being prepared for competitive colleges. The numbers here uh, or that we shared are not, um, they're, they're not caught up, right? They're just general trends that we've seen in previous scholars. And when selecting college prep scholars, these are some of the questions that we, um, that we consider. Does a student have the motivation and academic ability to thrive at one of our college partners? So again, we wanna set up our students for success, right? So that's why we ask this question. Does a student display resilience and good character despite personal adversity? And is a student from a low income background with minimal assets? So if you are answering yes to some of these questions, you might be eligible to apply to our programs. And of course, for more detailed information, you can always visit our website um, to explore who should apply um, to our programs. Now, before going into detail about the College Prep Scholars Program Awards, let's take a quick look at the snapshot of our College Prep Scholars from last year. So last year, we selected uh, 3,518 College Prep Scholars, but we don't have a cap and the total number varies each year. Um, so we had 83% of those on free or reduced lunch at uh, their school, at their high schools. We had 90% of them coming from, or having a household income of less than 65,000. The average unweighted GPA was a 3.94. 90% of them ranked in the top 10% of their graduating class. And 76% of them scored above a 1260 on the, on the SAT or a 26 on the ACT. So these are some numbers that you can use to, um, you know, to make an, a, a judgment on whether you should apply or not apply. But again, none of these are strict cutoffs, right? So you can just kind of be be generous with yourself as you're as you're looking at these at these numbers and figures. Um, and we also don't require a class rank or standardized testing, like I said. So if you don't have those, you don't need them to apply. Um, these are just some of the statistics from last year's College Prep Scholars. And for more details on things like average test scores or demographics, you can always check out our website. So 
now we're going to go into the College Trip Scholars program. We created the College Trip Scholars program to get high school students, uh, high school juniors, sorry, motivated to prepare for college admission and specifically for our program um, for high school seniors, the National College Match. So here are some of the benefits to the program. There are uh, lots of awards, resources, and specialized guidance to help develop a strong college application, like an invitation to attend one of our National College Admissions Conferences that is hosted on one of our college partners' campuses, um, where College Rep Scholars will have the opportunity to connect with others and, um, and learn from college partner admission representatives, as well as other QuestBridge Scholars and our QuestBridge staff. Um, since students are completing a mini version of a college application in order to apply to the College Prep Scholars program, it's also really just a head start in the admissions process. It's particularly beneficial to giving them in giving them a head start um, for the National College Match application because a lot of the components of the College Prep Scholars application will roll over to the National College Match. It's also a distinction um, in and of itself that can boost your resume, um, you know, by adding an, an honor to your application or your resume, and that is not school specific. So, right, so if you're applying to lots of schools your senior year, they can all see this and and they will know about this, this honor. Um, and you'll also be part of a supportive community of motivated peers who are all applying to college, who all have a lot of the same questions that you may have, um, and who are all trying to figure this out together. So it's it's nice to be part of that community that can support you in your journey to applying to college. All right, and I think some of these points got mixed up, but like I said, you get a head start on the National College Match application through College Rep Scholars. All right, so I do wanna mention though that you don't need to apply to CPS in order to apply to NCM to National College Match. Um, but here is a timeline of, of this application specifically of College Prep Scholars. So today, actually the, the application has opened, so it is launched. So you could go on our website today, right now after this webinar and start your application. It'll be due by March 20th. So it'll close on uh, March 20th at 1159 PM Pacific time. So just um, be aware of that um, of that time zone that it is due. In April, college for scholars that are selected um, will be letting well, they will they will we will let them know that they've been selected as college for scholars, and then we'll be um, awarding different summer opportunities like the conferences, as an example. In the late summer, application will the applications from college for scholars will then carry over to the national college match. And then finally, um, this fall, you'll be able to apply to the National College Match as a senior in high school. So this is a general timeline of what you can expect with College Prep Scholars. College Prep Scholars, sorry. All right. So did you know that in the past, College Prep Scholars are actually nearly six times more likely to be selected as National College Match Scholarship recipients? So I just wanna reiterate that students who complete the, the College Prep Scholars program application will get a head start in the college application process as these sections will roll over um, to the NCM application, the National College Match application. So that includes some of your writing, that includes your, um, your courses and other components of your application. So the College Prep Scholars program application is available on our website and it is free to fill out. So when you open up the application, these are the main sections that you will see. It might seem like a lot up front, but remember this is essentially a full college application. So by filling it out, you really are getting a head start on your college application, including for the National College Match. Um, so let's do a quick overview of what's included in each of these sections. So first is the household um, and financial information section. So this section is devoted to just explaining your family situation and financial information. So this helps us better understand your living situation, who supports you, and how many people are in your household. If parents are divorced or they don't live together, we will also require the financial information from the non-custodial parent. And we strongly encourage you to fill out this section with your parents or legal guardians if possible. For the academic section, you'll need to enter information about the high school that you are currently attending, as well as your coursework for 11th grade, um, and you'll be able to attach an unofficial transcript. 
For testing and honors, if you have taken any standardized test scores like AP tests, um, PS PSAT or pre-SAT tests, um, there's a space for you to upload copies of your unofficial score reports and also space to enter any scores manually. So specifically like AP scores or such. Um, however, as I previously, previously mentioned many times, these scores are not required and around half of QuestBridge applicants do not submit test scores, at least in the past. So when we say that we are test optional, we really are test optional. Um, students can also enter any honors that you have received at the school, local, or national level. So if you've got an honor roll, if you've won a spelling bee competition, if you've won some kind of essay competition, you could write those honors in your application. For recommendations, we require one letter of recommendation as part of your application. This should come up from a, a teacher who teaches you in a core subject. So this could be English, history, social studies, math, science, or foreign language. Um, and ideally it should be from a, a 10th or 11th grade teacher. So just make sure it's somebody that knows you well, right? In the writing section, we require um, an interactive writing exercise. So this is a great place to show um, your strong writing skills, your intellectual spark, um, and anything that you really think will help us get to know you better as a student. So we encourage you to have fun with these writing exercises um, so that you can be creative and just think a little bit differently about what it means to write about or to write a college essay and write about yourself for, for these kinds of applications. In the activity sections, we are interested in everything from community service to athletics to family responsibilities or a part-time job that you may have that takes up a significant part of your time outside of school. So these sections will let us get to know who you are outside of the classroom. So again, I wanna emphasize that if you have family responsibilities, um, like taking care of a sibling, or maybe you have to do a lot of translation work, um, or maybe you have a part-time job over the weekend. You know, those are all things that you should include as part of your application. Now, while the main purpose of College Trip Scholars is to help students prepare to be strong applicants to competitive colleges, there are also a number of tangible and experiential awards that are available to students. We consider all these opportunities to further either your experience as a student, uh, or your perspective or your ability to be prepared to apply to our college partners next fall. So one of the biggest benefits for students from all over the country and from all types of schools is um, the, sorry, sorry, sorry. One of the biggest benefits is for students from all over the country and from all types of schools and backgrounds to find a virtual community where you can meet other high school juniors who have similar experiences. In some cases, these connections are your first foray into learning that students like you are a good fit for a competitive college and that even if you are only if you are the only one um, in your school or town who is considering applying to faraway schools, you um, you have lots of other peers in this community who can help you feel supported in that journey. And we are also proud to share that all College Prep Scholars will receive an invitation to either a virtual or an in-person National College Admissions Conference. Here, students can meet and connect with other, with other college prep scholars, um, getting to know students from around the country with similar backgrounds and aspirations. And in 2023, we hosted in-person conferences at Pomona College, Emory University, and Northwestern University. And this year, we will again host conferences on the West Coast, as well as on the Northeast, the Midwest, and the South. So we have conferences in all the regions that we hope that you are able to attend. And the dates and the details of these conferences are in the application itself. So you should, after this webinar, go and start an application so you can see where you could potentially attend one of our conferences. The conferences are also free to attend and the in-person conferences include both breakfast and lunch. And they are co-hosted with admission representatives from all of our college partners. Um, so if you attend one of them you'll, and you wanna really meet you know, a representative from a specific school that you're interested in, you'll probably be able to meet them. Um, each student is invited um, with a parent or guardian and they have special sessions throughout the day just for them. Unfortunately, we don't have the ability to pay for everyone to travel to the conference, but we do offer travel grants and we offer at least one virtual conference that everyone is welcome to attend if they are otherwise unable to travel to one of the conferences in person. So in addition to the awards and distinction of being selected as a College Trip Scholar, 
All students are also in consideration for a variety of more specialized awards. So these are optional, but we strongly encourage students to apply. The first one is that we partner with the numerous summer programs at our colleges where we select students to attend free of charge. So some of these programs are remote, while others have a residential component um, where the award includes all costs associated with participation. So this includes travel, housing, uh, food, all that fun stuff. In other cases, such as with the Quest for Excellence Award, students will need to answer an additional prompt for consideration. So we award over 100 of these uh, Quest for Excellence Awards, and each award comes with $1,000 to spend on helping um, you, the applicant, through your college application journey. So these awards are offered in a variety of categories based on their interests and your background. So students must answer an additional prompt for each of these Quest for Excellence Awards, and they're and they are welcome to apply to multiple. So if you see lots of them that you're interested in, you can apply to all of them, all of them if you really wanted to. And there is no separate application for these awards specifically. So these are built into the College Prep Scholars Program application. Lastly, we also offer an exclusive college essay workshop for a select number of students. So these students who attend this workshop will be able to receive feedback from application readers on you know, how to go about the college essay. And again, there is no additional application for these awards. They're all within the College of Scholar application. And if you want to learn more about these specific awards, you can check out um, a series that we'll be doing that will that'll highlight each of these awards specifically. So definitely stay tuned for that. So now we're going to do another quick poll. So I'm going to launch it. So I'm interested in seeing what you all are, uh, are most curious about. So which, which of these awards are you interested in. So let me launch the poll. So again, we have the Quest for Excellence Awards, which are more like monetary awards that you can use for things like a laptop or for SAT prep if you want to if you want to pay for some, something like that. I've seen students pay for iPads in the past. And um, then we have the college summer programs where you can, you know, take some classes over the summer or do research. And then we have the writer's workshop. So this is another fun way to get to know both Questbridge staff and get to improve your writing as you prepare for um, college application season. So I see that lots of students are interested in college summer programs. Lots of students are interested in the Quest for Excellence Awards. Um, and students are also interested in the Writer's Workshop. So all of these are really, really wonderful opportunities that I encourage you all to do more research on so that you can um, really go into your application knowing what you want to apply for. These are all really, really great opportunities. And again, you can apply for all of these, right? So if you go into your application and you um, look at the summer programs, you look at the Quest for Excellence Awards, you look at the Writer's Workshop, and you're like, I want to do all of this. You can apply, but just know that students will typically only receive one of these awards. So it's best to cast a wide net and see, you know, what, what you're able to, what you're able to get. So thank you all for answering this poll. All right. <clears throat> All right, so let's keep going. So now I'm going to go into more detail on a few of the awards that we offer, so starting with the full scholarship to summer programs. So QuestBridge partners with some of our college partners to offer select college for scholars the opportunity to take college level courses at a top tier university in an immersive virtual program. So these scholarships offer outstanding, high achieving, low income students a special chance to experience life beyond high school and to gain firsthand experience on attending a selective college. So students will learn, uh, study, and write at the college level um, with professors, with renowned faculty, and they'll get to know them and, and get to really make um, deep connections with these professors. And while it also engaging in a lot of extracurricular programming like field trips or just fun days to explore um, the, the campus or the town surrounding the, the university or, or college. So programs will be offered through... Let's see, Carlson College, Emory University, and Rice University. And these programs have a focus on topics like computer science, interdisciplinary subjects like media studies and politics and medicine. So these are the first three of our um, college programs, that, summer college summer programs that are being offered. And then we also have Stanford University in Palo Alto. We have U Chicago and Notre Dame. So these, um, these are hosting 
again, really fun, really exciting summer programs that include things like a class called Fairy Tales and the Construction of Childhood. Um, so if you want to find out which of these programs offers that class as part of their summer program, you should definitely go do research on our website. Um, and then the last three are Penn, WashU, and Yale, who all host very different summer programs, actually, and they span from management and technology to healthcare and more. So I want to note that these programs have also already set their dates. So you should really go look into these programs, do your research, because in case you already have, you know, some summer vacation planned or you have things that you need to do this summer, um, you can keep those dates in mind as you apply to these programs. And again, you can apply to these programs um, by starting a College Trip Scholars application. And in the awards section, you'll select the programs that you are interested in and then complete the short response questions. So keep in mind that your entire application is used to nominate, is used to nominate you for a summer program. So we encourage you to build a strong application as a whole. Then we have the Quest for Excellence Awards, which give additional resources and opportunities to highly qualified students with a range of uh, specialized backgrounds and interests. And so awards are really designed to help students become stronger applicants at the nation's best colleges. And you may receive up to $1,000 for things like a new laptop, for things like a college visit, if you wanna go visit a school that you're interested in, um, or just various resources that you think will enhance your college application. So this could be maybe an online course that you are curious about. This could be test prep. This could be uh, standardized test registration fees. It could really be anything. And again, this is just part of the College of Scholars application. So you'll just need to find that category within the award section and then apply for as many as you like. Then we have the National College Admissions Conferences. So this is an award that is offered to all College Prep Scholars um, who are selected. And this is an invitation for only College Prep Scholars. So nobody else gets to attend this event. So it's really just for you all to, to learn from college admissions officers and to build community amongst the other scholars that you meet. Um, and this year they will be taking place in person and virtually. And they are hosted by our college partners, like, like I said. So you get behind the scenes application insight from our top colleges. Um, you'll get to meet admissions officers from all 52 of our college partners. And like I said, you'll be able to meet a lot of other college scholars, typically from all over the country. So it's a great way to just start building your community. Um, I know that a lot of the times when students meet as college scholars, they sometimes later meet as students at that same college or university. So it's really fun to see those connections build from the very beginning. All right. So finally, we'll go into some of the application support that you can expect as part of the College of Scholars application um, and other resources. So, um, so hopefully throughout this presentation, um, you have been convinced to at least start an application or at least to start doing research right on our website. Um, and you can do this, you can create an account to start an application by going to apply.questbridge.org. Um, and you'll want to sign up with an email that you use regularly outside of school. So we don't encourage you to use your school email just because a lot of the times those will be blocked by your school firewall. So make sure to use an email for your um, application or your account that is when you use outside of school. So after you have started an application, be sure to reach out to your recommender to ask them about writing a letter of recommendation. Um, if you've never asked a teacher for a letter of recommendation, explore our Student Resource Center first. Um, there you're gonna find a lot of helpful resources that um, will be helpful for you and your recommender. So if you've never asked for a letter, it'll tell you how you can write, how you can ask um, for a letter of recommendation. It'll give you a form to fill out where you can write about your activities so that your recommender knows what to write about. Um, so those will be really helpful resources in the Student Resource Center. Um, and now I am curious if you can raise your hand if you've already started an application. I know it just launched today, so um, it might not be that many. Oh, wow. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of people who have already raised their hands. Um, and hopefully if you aren't raising your hand, it means that you will be starting an application soon because you've been convinced through this, through this webinar. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and thank you all for raising your hands, but we'll go ahead and keep going. 
So we want to share just a few resources that we have that you can um, that you can use is, as you're applying to both College Prep Scholars or just other um, scholarship opportunities. So we have this thing called the Student Resource Center Workbook, which is a collection of all of our resources that we have um, that we have for for students. So it will include things like grade specific checklists to have a successful high school career. So you can check out the 11th grade checklist, for example. You can also look at the summer before 12th grade checklist to see what you can do to prepare for senior year later on. It will give you really practical and helpful advice about writing college admissions essays or just getting to know yourself in this process, which is equally as important when you're starting this, this journey. Um, and it'll also have glossaries about college admissions and financial aid terms that, you know, might be unknown to you as a junior. I know they were to me when I was a junior in high school, so it'll be really helpful to just feel like you have a starting point in this, in this journey. And I'll have lots more resources, so definitely be sure to explore the Student Resource Center workbook on our website. And then our on-demand webinars, including this one, you will be able to find on YouTube. So you can just go to youtube.com slash QuestBridge. You'll find us pretty easily um, in the playlist that you'll find on, um, on our YouTube page. You'll find lots of resources that'll be relevant to the college, um, to the College Prep Scholars application cycle. Um, you'll find, as an example, you'll find three steps to secure a strong recommendation. So again, if this is your first time ever asking for a letter of recommendation, definitely check out this video. I know it might be a bit longer than what you're used to, but you should definitely check it out and at least skip through the part so that you can find that really important information. We will also be posting our award spotlight series on YouTube that will highlight specifically the summer programs, the Quest for Excellence Awards, and more. And in these series, we are actually going to be speaking to current QuestBridge scholars who received a summer program award or who, was, or who received a Quest for Excellence Award um, back in the day when they were college scholars. So if you want to hear firsthand what it's like to, to receive this award, to go to a summer program over the, um, over the summer or to you know, receive $1,000 and then have to figure out what to, how to use that award, I would definitely encourage you to check out that series once they're posted on YouTube. And then we also have YouTube Shorts. Um, so these are just 60 second um, application advice videos where we break down sections of the application so that they're less daunting and they're easy for you to quickly watch and then you know tackle that section of the application. And lastly, we also have Quested videos. So if you are in the application itself and you you know you don't know how to navigate a specific session a specific section. You'll be able to watch these videos, which will provide you step-by-step -step instructions, um, and it'll highlight a lot of important reminders as you're breezing through the application. I know that when you're a student and you're looking at the application, you can sometimes miss the instructions or, you know, really helpful links. So it'll highlight those and then will help you solve common technical issues that you may be facing in the application itself. So these are all really great resources that you can explore and use as you're applying to College of Scholars. Now, beyond our recorded application resources, we also have various virtual opportunities to support you um, in this application cycle. So we have Ask QB Anything sessions. So these are weekly sessions that will start February 28th, and they happen at 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern time. So these are live sessions where QuestBridge staff like myself, like my colleagues, um, answer your questions about the application, um, so these are great to join and register for. And if you have a teacher or if you have, or if you are an educator or uh, you have a counselor who asks questions about this process, we encourage you to refer them to live Q&A for educators. So this is a great opportunity for educators to come and ask their questions. Um, these will happen on Thursdays and some other days starting February 22nd um, at 12 p.m. Pacific time, 3 p.m. Eastern time. So these are still kind of throughout the school day. So hopefully teachers or recommenders or educators in general can join these sessions and have their questions answered live as well. So if you want to register for these opportunities, you can go to the link to register for either of these sessions. All right. And as juniors, I know that it can be really overwhelming, especially right now. This is a lot of information. Um, 
that, you know, I'm presenting to you all. And it can be really daunting to start thinking about college applications so early. Um, but here I have a, a quote from Raven, who is now at Stanford University, who was a college scholar back in the day, um, who really shares that it, it is worth it, right? So she says, becoming a college scholar was honestly the turning point for me. Before that, I didn't know if I even had what it took to get accepted into a prestigious university. I was so worried that I wouldn't be good enough and that I would fall short. When I became a college scholar, my confidence grew tremendously. Questbridge had reassured me that I did have the ability to succeed even when all at, even when all odds were stacked against me. So, like Raven said, it you know it, it's important to take that to take that leap of faith and see what happens. Um, so we we hope that you that you apply. It can really be a turning point, like it was for Raven. So again, thank you so so much, everybody, for sticking along for this uh, or staying along for this for this webinar. We hope that we receive an application from you on March twentieth, and we encourage you to again check out those resources that we'll be uploading um, to YouTube so that you can learn more about our programs, learn more about our awards, um, and we hope you have a great night. If you have any questions, um, we'll be able to stay on a few minutes to answer questions in the Q and A. Um, and then, of course, if you have some questions that are more detailed, you can also email us to email us at questions um, at questbridge.org. So I'll go ahead and answer some of the questions that are in the Q&A. So let's see. Sorry. All right. Can the scholarships be international? So again, I'll refer back to the eligibility criteria there. Um, if you are a U.S. citizen or permanent resident that is living or attending high school outside of the U.S., you are still eligible to apply. Um, but otherwise, international students who are studying outside of the U.S. are not eligible to apply. So I'm going to try and answer this live. Okay. Um, can I already have a recommendation letter since December? Can I use that to apply? So your recommender, whoever you um, include in your application to be a recommender, they'll have to upload their letter of recommendation through a specific QuestBridge form. So you won't be the one uploading it. It'll have to be the person that you write in to be your recommender. So that's a great question. All right. This webinar will be available on YouTube, so you can definitely check it out there. Um, does being a finalist confer any advantages, even if one isn't matched? So that's a question more specifically about, oh, I keep scrolling, uh, more specifically about NCM, so the National College Match. And being a finalist in and of itself is also an honor and something that is a distinction that you can put on your college application. So it is definitely still something that um, can make you stand out in the college application cycle. What if your grades last semester were Bs and AP classes? That's a great question. Um, if you have grades that you know you aren't the happiest with, you can always explain those in the additional information boxes of the application. So if you got a B in a class, um, you know you can explain why that was. But of course, we don't expect every single student to have absolutely you know hundreds in all of your classes. Um, really, we're just looking for students who are high achieving overall, who are generally doing well in their classes. Um, 1B will not be the end of your college journey, so or your college application journey. So definitely still apply, even if you have 1B in an AP class. Um, let's see, I'm trying to read all these questions, but there are a lot. If you have very specific questions, especially, especially about non-custodial parents or um, you know household situations or financial situations, I would encourage you to email those questions to us because it's pretty difficult to answer those more specific questions in a live webinar or in an Ask QB session. So those are better asked via email so that we can, you know, receive more context and we can give you a more detailed answer. Um, I see some questions about, you know, can I apply with this test score or can I apply with this GPA? Um, Again, we don't have strict cutoffs. We don't have strict numbers or scores that you have to reach, that you have to abide by. We really are looking at the application as a whole. So, you know, if you have, um, and if you're doing well in your classes in general, like let's say you have lots of A's in your classes, but maybe your, your SAT score wasn't the best, right? We're still gonna look at the entire application and make a judgment as a whole. 
So I would encourage you to, um, to still apply. If you're not super comfortable in the score that you have, um, in like an SAT or pre-SAT or any of those standardized test scores, again, you don't have to submit them. It is completely optional. Um, and I saw some questions about AP and IB courses, if those are seen as rigorous. AP and IB courses are definitely seen as rigorous courses, uh, but we know that not all high schools offer those kinds of courses. So um, that's why we ask in the application, what are the classes that your high school offers? Do they offer dual enrollment? Do they offer AP or IB classes? Do they offer honors courses, right? And that's what we're going to use to determine rigor at your high school. But IB and AP classes are definitely um, are definitely considered rigorous co courses. All right, I recently changed schools and I didn't take the AP. So I'm guessing you didn't take the AP test. So that's okay. If you didn't take an AP test for a specific class, we know that sometimes you have to pay for these for those tests. And so it's not as accessible um, to take those, um, those extra tests. So that is completely okay. You still um, probably got a grade for that class, right? Like a, like a letter grade or a number grade. And so we'll look at that on your transcript. But though the AP scores are not required to apply. Are dual enrollment accepted? Are dual enrollment classes accepted in the application? Absolutely, yeah. So if you are in dual enrollment classes, we will definitely look at those classes. And if that is something that is seen as rigorous at your high school, then we will look at it just the same. All right. Um, can I have multiple rec letters or does it have to be only one? That is a great question. So for the let for the College of Scholars application, we only accept one letter of recommendation. No more, uh, no less. We definitely want at least one um, or we want just one. Sorry. So if you have extra rec letters, you know, it won't we won't accept them because you only get one specific link for uh, for a recommender to submit a letter. So we won't accept letters via email, via fax, via mail. Um, so definitely be aware of that. Um, if you want your letter, okay, so I, I see some questions about who can write the letter of recommendation. We want someone who knows you inside of the classroom. So somebody asked if it could be a guidance counselor. <coughs> For um, the college college application, it really should be a teacher um, who knows you well, right? And it should be in a core subject. So that could be, again, English, math, history, uh, foreign language, those kinds of classes. So um, again, this recommendation letter is really meant to get, is meant to help us get to know you in the classroom. So somebody like a guidance counselor probably wouldn't be the best fit for this letter of recommendation since they don't know what you're like as a student in your current classrooms. All right. <clears throat> Let's see. If you have questions about who can be considered a, a like a core subject, definitely email us. Um, but generally, they should fall within those subjects, right? English, math, social studies, science, and foreign language. All right, I'm trying to see what other questions we are receiving. Do I submit grades for this ongoing spring semester? So that's a great question. So if you go into the application, you'll see that you'll have to list your current courses that you've taken, at least for this 11th grade year. So in that section, it'll ask you what your grade is or if it is a current class. So if it's a current class and you don't have a established grade for it yet, you can just you can just indicate that it is a current class and we won't ask for a grade. But if you already took a class your 11th grade year, let's say your fall semester, and you already got a grade for that, you would be asked to indicate that grade for that class. Um, I noticed there is no personal essay. Is that not required anymore? That's a great question and great observation. No, so for the um, College for Scholars application, we are no longer requiring a longer personal essay. It'll be those writing exercises that are a bit shorter. So um, I encourage you all to go into the application because they are really fun, um, creative exercises that I think are going to be a great way for students to think a bit more creatively about the um, college application uh, journey, especially when considering those essays, the, the essay portion. So definitely go into the application and check it out. But no, we are no longer requiring those longer personal essays for NCM or for CPS, sorry. All right, let's see. I'll answer a few more questions since we still have some, some more time. Uh, can we submit classes that we are taking senior year? No. So you just want to submit classes that you're taking your 11th grade year, given that things could change your senior year. You know, you might discover a new passion. You might 
you know, a class might not be offered anymore. So just stick to reporting classes that you are taking this senior year or this junior year, sorry, and also submit a transcript so that we can see the classes that you took your ninth and 10th grade year. For the responses, should we write it like it is a narrative or be more direct? So if you go into the application, you'll see that it gives you very clear instructions on how to go about it. And there really is no right or wrong way to answer your own, um, the own your, you know, the own, your own question that you develop for the section. So it really is whatever makes most sense to you, the, the way that you feel you can convey most about who you are as a student um, to get to know, to, for us to get to know you better. Um, so in this College Prep Scholars application, you no longer have to write in the courses that you took your previous years, uh, like ninth grade year or 10th grade year. I know that was the case in uh, former iterations of this application, but now all we require is that transcript so that we can see what classes you were taking your ninth and 10th grade year. If I do not get into this into the College Prep Scholars program, will I still be able to apply to the National College Match? That is a great question. Um, you will still be able to apply to the National College Match. That was actually what happened to me. I applied to College Prep Scholars when I was a junior. I was not selected. And I kind of just used that as motivation to work harder on my National College Match application. And I was selected as a match recipient my senior year. So it is definitely possible. Um, but getting ahead with the College Prep Scholars application is definitely helpful. Even for me, it was really helpful to just start thinking more about what was being asked of me in the college application process. How long does it take to fill up the application? So if you are someone who is, you know, very focused and very motivated, you know, you could finish it in, you know, a few, like a few days, maybe. Of course, like if you're sitting down like a couple hours every night, uh, but we encourage you to take your time with it, right? It's a, it can be a long application, especially the financial information section, which we encourage you to fill out with your parent or legal guardian. Um, and then have fun with those essays, right? Take your time, um, and, and really try to be creative about the process so that we can get to know you better. Alrighty, um, I think there are a lot of questions here, over 250 questions, so I will definitely not be able to get to all of them. Um, but if you have questions that you really want answered, you can check out our Ask um, our Ask QB online help portal. You'll find answers to a lot of FAQ, FAQ questions there. But if you have questions that aren't answered on our online help portal, then you can certainly email us at questions at questbridge.org. Um, but since there are a lot of questions, I think I will end it there. And again, um, you can check out the recording of this webinar on YouTube, share it with any friends, uh, your peers, or you know anybody who you know who may be a good fit for this program. But thank you all so, so much for, for watching and for staying this late. I really appreciate it. And I hope that you all have a great night. Thank you so much, y'all. Bye-bye.